Y'all, that song gets me going. I'm sorry. Happy New Year. How's everybody? I am so elated that it's 2018. I just have no idea what's gonna come, but I am so excited for the future. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Chriselle Monet, and I am a fashion, beauty, and wellness blogger. I'm telling you, that song will send you in every time. I hope that you had a wonderful, I was about to say Thanksgiving. Er, take two. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas, a wonderful time bringing in the new year. As I did, it was very chill, but it was powerful. I wanted to take a little time to share with you guys um, reflections from 2017 and the year at a glance. I'm a little extra today because it's the first week of the year, so I can be a little extra. Just so grateful to be alive. Like there have been so many things that I have gone through in life um, as we all go through things right but there's so many things that through the grace of God that I have overcome and so you know when you just look back over your life and you really reflect on things that has happened you think how did I get over that how did I get under that how did I get through that it's just important to think about those things and just measure progress as uh, 2018 plays out. So here's the top 10 things that I realized that has really pretty much been my 2017, okay? If I could summarize 2017 in one word, it would be alignment. 2017 was definitely my year of alignment. Number one, um, I found my church home. For those of you who don't know, I go to All Nations Worship Assembly in Chicago, Illinois, where Dr. Matthew and Camila Stevenson are the senior leaders. So searching for a church home for a while. I have been a serial visitor, different places in Chicago. When I went to All Nations, I just knew I'm definitely going to join. And so it didn't take me but maybe a couple of visits after that. And I was at the altar, okay, and in the line. The teachings, the environment, the worship, everything there is just amazing. Um, it is very unorthodox, and which I like. You know, I've grown up in the church, and I didn't really, I knew of God, but I didn't really get to know God, like as Abba Father. And so when I got here, and the teachings that were being poured into my life, I just got so full and then I just wanted to share with everybody else and so this is how I knew that this is supposed to be where I stay and so found my church home in every aspect of the word I have definitely grown she is not the girl that she used to be and that's a good thing the second thing for 2017 that I noticed is that my mind had been transformed the form of things that once used to haunt me um, things that I had been through God really took that and just did a metamorphosis and turned that thing around and things that I used to care about I do not care about anymore um, things I used to worry about I definitely 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 don't worry about anymore it can be a battle in your mind and you don't even know it real talk I'll be the first to tell you sometimes you just hear stuff and it just come out of nowhere and you be like where did that come from I wasn't even thinking about that and then it just come in like a flood and, and just one thought after another thought it's like a domino effect just you know that's the enemy the battle is in your mind and when once you get over what's going on up there that is not of God you can conquer anything and one of my favorite uh, scriptures is Romans 12 and 2 the Bible states do not be conformed by the things of this world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind and let me tell you that thing is real there has been I noticed a generational thing um, in my lineage on one side of my family with the battle in the mind and so um, I made a vow that it was ending with me it was ending with me and it was not going to my children or my grandchildren any further it was stopping here can't do it alone you know you need um, the protection and the peace of God to carry you through whatever you're going through from day to day because things happen life happens you know things are thrown at us 
left and right, whether it's at work, whether it's in relationships, whether it's in friendships, whether it's financially, whether it's business-wise, it's just always something going on. You ever heard that term, if it ain't one thing, it's another? It's important that you forget the former things and shift your way of thinking so that you can step into your future and move forward and to become the person that um, you were ordained to be. And so I'm just so grateful for my mind transformation because it is key in healing and deliverance. Third thing I would say is um, I experienced heart surgery spiritually, not physically. Okay, my church had all the convention, but um, where all of the uh, members of the Gate Network, all of the churches that are part of under the branch of All Nations Chicago, under the leadership of Dr. Matthew Stevenson, um, all came together in one place in October of 2017, and it was a three-day conference, World Changers Summit. If you could make it this October 2018. I would definitely do it, okay? I experienced heart surgery, and let me tell you how. So on Friday night, which was the first night, the senior pastor, uh, Matthew L. Stevenson III, um, he preached a word, and it was pretty much about heart surgery and how, you know, it was open heart surgery that God was doing on his people. Sometimes you don't know what's hidden in your heart, and so therefore you have to ask God to search your heart and show you what's in there. Because if it's anything that is hindering your growth, God will definitely clean that thing up if you ask Him and if you honestly um, are open to what He's revealing to you. So there was a point after He preached the message that He asked everybody to stand up, stretch their hands out to the Lord, and just let God do what he was going to do. I am lifting my hands and worshiping God. I promise you, I felt from the waist up. Okay, so obviously my heart is here. But from the waist up, I felt a shaking. It wasn't nobody real big in the aisle stomping. So it wasn't nobody doing that. I promise you, I felt my body shaking. It wasn't like a, 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 a serious shake, but it was like a, a vibration. It was... And, and I was surprised by that because I had never experienced that any before, but I just let it happen. When I tell you, I felt so free. I felt so free and so light. And then I, and then it clicked later on that night when I got to the hotel room, what was happening? God pretty much took the things from my heart that was unlike him and that needed to be discarded. And he took those things and he he cleared it out. And I know it may sound crazy, but listen, if I don't know nothing. You know, people ask me a lot about hair, makeup, clothes, and all that other stuff. Okay? If I don't know nothing, she knows that God is real. And so, just take me in my word. I definitely experienced open heart surgery in the spiritual realm. And so, because of that, I definitely changed how I look at myself, how I think about myself. Because the Bible says... Whatever a man thinketh, so is he. Whatever you think about yourself, that's what you are. Past hurt, past rejection, past, um, I don't know, disappointment, failure, whatever that may be stuck here, that transpired here, because the heart and the mind, they are connected. Okay, they respond to each other. A lot of that has to do with things that need to be cleared out the heart. So that was the third thing. I experienced spiritual heart surgery. Fourth thing is not only did I dedicate my life to Christ because my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, I also dedicated my body to Christ. I presented it as a living sacrifice and so I sacrificed in the way of celibacy. April Fool's Day 2017, <laughs> April 1st, Chriselle decided to no longer be a fool. She was not having sex with anybody else anymore. She wasn't even kissing nobody. I'm not even kissing nobody until I get married. Now, you guys know, or for those who don't know, I was married years ago. I've been divorced for a little over five years. Thank God I've been delivered from that. But once I get remarried, because I feel like that will happen again, um, well, I believe that it will happen again. Once I get remarried, that will be the time where... Um, all of that will go down but before that 
Nobody's touching her. Nobody's kissing her. Nobody's rubbing on her. Nobody's doing none of that because it's just not what I'm going to be doing. I thank God because I don't even think about having sex. I don't even think about that. I mean, every now and again, of course, you know, you, you have, uh, you know, visuals on TV or whatever, and it might trigger something. But that's something that I want to give to my husband. I don't want to be spiritually and physically tied to all these bodies and have all these body counts out here. I just want to um, be in the will of God. And I know that the safest place is in his will. And so in order for me to do that, I have to set myself apart. I have to do things differently. And one of the things that I definitely know for sure that the man of God that he has for me is going to respect that and he's going to be walking that same walk as well. So I'm grateful that I decided to discipline myself, please God, honoring him with my life, my body, and sacrificing the things of my flesh that used to satisfy it and bury those old things that used to distract me from the pain that I was really trying to mask. Yeah, celibacy is what it do. When it comes to the year of alignment, obviously I'm getting my teeth aligned. With the exception of the last video, you guys have not seen me with braces unless you pay real close attention because for a while, I don't know why, I just didn't smile with my braces. They were a little bit painful and so I just try not to adjust my mouth too much. But now, you see, you see, your girl got braces, you see? I jacked my teeth up because I was a tomboy when I was younger, right? And so I decided to play flag football on a concrete school ground when I was like a teenager. Fell chin first on the concrete. This side just crunched down. My left side was cool, but my right side wasn't right. And when the selfie game came into play, uh, uh, certain angles, don't you know when people take pictures of you, right? And then they don't check with you to say, hey, you think this is cute or whatever. Not that everybody's supposed to do that. But sometimes they know you don't look right. Or they just looking at themselves and they're like, oh, I'm cute. I'm finna post this. We all have done it, right? And so anyway, there was a picture from a, a friend of mine or whatever. I'm not upset with her about it. But she posted a picture and it was at a high angle. And I took a look over here. The crowding, y'all, was real. And I was like, nope, nope, nope. It's time. It's time. It's time to get it together now. Because if I don't do it now, when am I going to do it? That my teeth are aligning already. But when I got the braces, uh, I assumed in my mind that I wasn't, I wasn't going to see any type of results until like six months. When I tell y'all, these teeth down here, it was a tooth that was turned all the way to the left. I mean, it was cha-cha slime all the way to the left. This one down here, okay? Within a month, it aligned. And I was like, my God, is this all that it took? I, I should have had braces a long time ago. But uh, it's all good. And then this tooth up here, the, the big tooth, um, it also was turned this way somehow. And it is starting to align. So... I'm excited about my teeth and grill together because nobody want a messed up grill, right? Number six, I would say, would be the healing process from Soul Ties, as I mentioned before. There was a lot of healing and deliverance that was uh, taking place when you experience life, right? Certain things you kind of just tuck away and you don't really want to think about them. And it's okay not to think about it. Um, but that residue can sometimes still be there, okay? And then certain triggers can, can set it off. And so now, I don't have those triggers. I can talk about stuff, I can look at stuff, and it don't even bother me. And I'm just so grateful that um, my soul is healed, uh, my mind, my body, my spirit, my heart, everything is coming into alignment to um, where it should be so that I am free from all of that bondage that I experienced in the past. Number seven, um, I would say that I forgave myself and started to love myself even more. Forgiving myself in the sense of decisions that I made that kind of steered my life in the direction that it is today. 
Um, not that I have a horrible life. No, God, that is not what I'm, I'm claiming. I'm just saying that, you know how sometimes you be like, coulda, woulda, shoulda. You just be like, man, why, where was your head at? Why did you do that? How, if you could have done this differently, your whole life could have been different or whatever. But at the end of the day, all of your steps are ordered by the Lord. Things are supposed to happen as they are supposed to. You just have to not worry about the things that you can't control and uh, just honor the things that you can. Forgiving myself, loving myself, and um, realizing who I am and seeing myself as the Father sees me. Number eight, um, I got baptized, y'all. <laughs> and this is such a, a great thing for me. And let me tell you why. So I had this fear of water, right? Because when I was younger, once again, that fear, that fear ain't nothing to play with. So when I was younger, um, I almost was drowned by this little boy that liked me. You know how little boys are. But anyway, so I had this fear of water ever since I was little. I still don't know how to swim yet. I, that is definitely on the bucket list. I'm going to learn very soon. But I had this fear of water and... Um, I always kept saying I need to be baptized I had never been baptized when you make the conscious decision to present yourself to the public and to God that you know you are living for him and you are when you go down in the water the old person is you know is left in the water and when you come up you are washed clean um, oh I gotta hurry up because these braids are fighting with my sleeves the baptism that I experienced in November of this year, of 2017 was amazing. I was nervous all up into it. And I had all these things and, you know, these fears like, oh, maybe you shouldn't do it. Maybe you shouldn't do it. I'm talking about I procrastinated and put it off left and right. I hate to admit that, but it is the truth. And so I'm glad that I bit the bullet and said, you know what? I'm going to do this thing. So, yeah, I got baptized and I know that I definitely please God by doing that. And that was a part of my life's work to do things that are pleasing to him as I live for him um, every day. So Nine, uh, divine connection. I have been connected with so many amazing people in 2017. They have challenged me and helped me stretch and, you know, um, spiritually and emotionally and you know business wise um, I reconnected with some people